Welcome back, everyone, and I know you've been waiting, so it's time for another episode of Super Crooks Unveiled. We last left off to telling my top 10 most powerful characters from the Super Crook show. Today, however, I ask you to pull up a chair while we examine the life of the series protagonist, Johnny Bolt. Now, if you've forgotten or this is your first video in the series, I strongly advise you go check out my Super Crooks playlist before continuing. But now, to begin, we have to first break the ice by saying exactly where in Johnny Bolt's life did the spark of heroism not only appear, but also fade. Johnny born to, as the story presents, a single parent household and coupled with a neglectful man-hungry mother, already developed what many children in said environments take to, escapism. Johnny finds himself lost in the worlds of superheroes. We see him drawing comics of his favorite heroes and himself fighting crime together, even creating his hero persona of Electro Boy. One theory that I have is that Johnny's father was actually a superhero and for whatever reason never was a part of Johnny's life. This longing for attention and fame is the exact catalyst to create the smooth talking criminal that we know today as the Johnny Bolt. We've covered this on the show before, but perhaps the biggest case I'd like to make as I expand further on Johnny is that we all need to understand how traumatizing and disastrous the pool scene truly was. Johnny, with the help of his friend, created his dream, his superhero persona. He practiced his powers and he thought he had a good grip on them. He thought he was ready to show the world. What Johnny wasn't ready for was someone shouting out his secret identity on his debut. Tommy. Electro Boy. Hold on a second. That's Johnny Bolt. <laughs> this was one of the last moments we ever see this side of Johnny. The deep creative and eager to succeed Johnny. This is the first morality check we would do in this video. Is Johnny the bad guy in his accidental killing of a pool full of children? I say no. Though throughout the consequences of Johnny's actions, yes, countless died, Johnny's intentions were good but ignorant. Looking from the outside in, anything short of immediately contacting and informing authorities about his powers, it was going to be a recipe for disaster. Though I dare say any of you imagine getting superpowers as a teenage boy and tell me what you're going to do. Johnny's accident was a little more than just tragic. And it was even more tragic than just the kids inside the pool. But this is where I will personally say Johnny shouldn't be held responsible for anything after he fell in the pool. From victims fleeing outside the building and panicking onto the highway, to the driver swerving which caused the semi-trailer to explode, which crashed into a church killing its inhabitants and causing a smoke screen that blinded a distracted trucker who drives into a gas station which launches his cargo, a trailer of pigs into the energized water. Oh my God. God, Johnny. Though yes, initially, Johnny caused this, there's key events that made this event even possible. From Johnny's bully overhearing his superhero name and exposing him on his debut, to Johnny falling in the water and everything proceeding. Now we enter a different phase of Johnny's decisions. Preceding his unintentional mass homicide, Johnny is quite broken. His friend tries to console him, only for Johnny to vent and become angry. Understandably, Johnny here is a child whose idyllic dreams of doing good literally cause mass pain and suffering. Here we lose the light of Electro Boy and the infamous Johnny Bolt is birth. Beginning what is likely the largest ATM heist in American history, as he describes stealing from ATMs was how he survived and made the legend of Johnny Bolt. Through this, Johnny discovers his ability to steal, and after that, we see zero applications of Johnny's more complex abilities, such as magnetization and flight. Now clearly, this is the case I've made to some of you in the comments in other videos. After this incident, I truly believe Johnny internalized his trauma as a lesson of sorts, that he wasn't meant to ever use his powers for good, and didn't truly deserve to be someone that got a heroic end. Going to jail an unknown amount of times, but it had to be large because seeing as how the other prisoners and even guards knew Johnny on a personal level, at some point along the way, Johnny met his honey bear, Casey. This begins an even deeper dive into the psychology of Johnny Bolt. We see often, almost pathologically, Johnny lies to Casey, promising her one last job, or even justifying and lying to himself to seek out one more job for the both of them, in quotation marks. This even extends to being influenced by Frostbite and the rest of the crew. Deep down, Johnny doesn't recognize his values or gifts and behaves like nothing more than just a petty criminal, following others' plans and always barely getting by constantly just for the thrill. We even see Frostbite say that they do this specifically for the thrill of villainy. Some would ask how can Johnny continue to do the things he does and still believe the next plan will work? Because in Johnny's life, it was all do or die, make it happen, get rich or die trying basically. The true death of Johnny Bolt was when he lost his spark of creativity, 
when he stopped believing in his own abilities, and I know this may sound like philosophy to you guys, but we see this directly switch again because after his tragic mass ATM heist and the failure of the Heat's mission, Johnny finds himself leaving Casey at the altar and to even the disappointment of the guards and his fellow prisoners back in the Supermax jail. This was Johnny's rock bottom. He had lost everything, his crew, his fortune, and even Casey. All plans had went wrong. Here we see the spark of Electro Boy come back to life. During his years in prison, I assume Johnny reviewed his life because he came out of prison beyond galvanized to correct himself. Once the Heat came looking for Johnny and Casey's help, Johnny unveiled his plans that somehow I assume was years in the making. Piecing together various connections and information, Johnny creates the ultimate heist. We even see him looking back over his old Electro Boy drawings and art. This is why I call it the return of Electro Boy. Johnny is now the leader and planner as he's always been capable of being. The extent of this planning from somehow learning of the gladiators affairs and closet infidelity to putting their original heist team back together and the depths he went to to have to have covered up the entire plan afterwards by framing the fucking salamander for robbing the bastard, taking care of literally two birds with one stone because I'm gonna detract for a second and talk about exactly how brilliant that was. So even at the end of that, they had robbed them, the Heat would have still had to pay Salamander. So if he paid the Salamander, there'd be a clear red flag. They knew, Salamander knew that the Heat could not pay back that money. It was to be a display of power to show him that people couldn't get away with this. And Johnny covered all that shit up. Now, I'm not sure about the costumes that they chose. They never really gave mention to who those people were, but I'm just gonna assume they were like, old buddies of the villains so you all tell me is johnny bolt simply someone who turns his own circumstances around or is he just a super crook though i will say i'm positive johnny killed an innocent airplane repairman when they had to rescue tk from supermax but you know when some lose some thanks for watching another episode on the channel click that bell icon and subscribe to know when we drop more content and i'm gonna try and push more on youtube in the coming months thanks again everyone